Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. If you haven't been watching, we have been working on this really cool 1978 Bally Kiss pinball machine that a customer brought us. He's had this for a while and he wanted us to fix it up for him and get the thing working and uh, playing so that he can enjoy it. Now, we have done several videos. We did one where we kind of just looked over the condition it was in when we got it in. We did one where we worked on the power supplies and we did one where we worked on the MPU. And when last we left you, we had got the MPU to boot and the game is up and running right now. Look at that. But we still got several other things we need to work on. Like for instance, the auxiliary board isn't working. Some of the lamps aren't working. The play field is very worn and dirty and in bad shape. The soundboard isn't working, right? So we still got some stuff to work on. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna work on the displays and we're gonna work on the soundboard. So uh, we'll uh, hopefully have it farther along where maybe we can start a game by the end of the, by the, end of the, uh, the video here, hopefully. So we're just incrementally working through it. Whenever you get one that hasn't been messed with in a long time, you just got to go through it and fix every little thing. So we're, we're getting it back up and running. Now the customer wants to keep it original cosmetically. So he doesn't want us to put decals over this wear in the middle. This was very common on KISS uh, playfields. It just had so many inserts right there in the middle that it would wear the paint all the way away. All the way away. What do you think about that? All the way away. So we're going to leave it like this, but we're going to clean it up and try to make it look as presentable as possible. And then on the sides, he wants us to leave this as well. So we're going to leave it original. This is just, you know, he wants one that shows a little wear and is all pretty much what's left of the original paint and, and all of that. So that's what we're going to do. But moving right through our electronics, the very next thing we're going to do is when we got the MPU to boot, uh, we did get one of the displays to come on. The other ones aren't plugged in. Uh, but that's what we're going to do next. So we'll... Is that one there? No, it's unhooked too. So they're all unhooked. We unhooked them whenever we were working on the power supply. Uh, so we're going to uh, work through those one by one and just see what kind of shape they're in. Hopefully save all of his displays for them. And then we're going to work on this soundboard. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one of the displays. We'll take it in the back room and look at it. And I'll show you what to look at. Um, whenever you're servicing these and just trying to get them back functional again. So here is one of the displays. Now we're going to service all of them just so that uh, they'll be reliable. So on a ballet display, these are also the same as the stern displays. The 90% of your problems, if you have problems, will be because this connector has bad solder on it. So you add a little solder to each one of these pins to reflow it and reheat it and that will fix 90% of your problems. Um, let's see if we can tell if one of them is cracked loose. I don't see it. Well, yep. Okay, see that first one? See the ring at the base of it? wonder if I can zoom. Should we attempt the zoom? Oh yeah, boy you're getting some exclusive footage here people. This is the type of stuff you don't see anywhere else. Alright, look at the first pin. See the ring at the base of it? Look at the second pin. See the ring at the base of it? Now look at the third pin. You don't see it? Okay, so that is a broken solder joint. I had somebody the other day by the way who I will go ahead and call a jackass. Leave some long-winded comment on my video that us Americans don't pronounce solder right or some crap. He was saying since I was saying solder that somehow um, that reflects badly on me. Okay, look, buddy, I'm from the south and your ass has been blocked from all my videos, so who's the smarter one? <laughs> So anyway, the solder, it's a bad solder uh, joint. It's just cracked loose. So the connector is sending whatever signal it sends in on that pin. 
it's getting onto the pin and it's electrifying this entire pin but it's not actually doing anything on the board because the pin is actually no longer touching the board even though at first glance it looks like it's fine and it's usually on the end because when you pull the connector off let's say you pull it like this right you pull it off that's the last one so you 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 kink that one a little bit whenever you pull it off and so eventually it cracks the S O L D E R joint. So this one, like this other side, same thing going on. See the first one at the end there? See the ring around it? That looks like it's connected to the board, but it is not connected to the board. Another thing is, if it's just barely connected to the board, it it may not work right because it depending on what kind of juice it's sending through it. Now, people, look, I know I am not a engineer, <laughs> so I don't I don't know the proper way to put it, but it's trying to send a bunch down that pipe, right? And it's barely connected. It can't get through, right? So if it doesn't have a good connection, you're going to have problems. That's what you need to do. So we're going to re-solder all of these, and that will fix 90% of the problems. Uh, so let me do that, and then I'll show you the next problem that is a problem. Okay, so we refloat all the solder on that. A little bit of new solder on all of them. Now remember, it's just the end ones, but we did all of them just in case there's some more that are trying to act up. We're trying to get them to straighten up and fly right. Okay, and then the next thing, that, so that will fix 90% of your problems. The next thing that will fix if you have uh, missing digits. So like if, so this is, um, we're looking at the back of it. The ones digit, tens digit, hundreds digit, thousands digit, ten thousands digit, hundred thousands digit. So there's six digits on most of the displays. Some of them have seven. Uh, there is a resistor that basically provides power to each of those. And on the on the board, it's over in the corner. R1, R3, R5, R7, R9, and R11. So the odd ones in the first six. And there's a seventh one if you if it's a seven digit. Notice how burnt up the board is. So why is that happening? Probably because the voltage was high on the displays. So luckily, it wasn't operated long enough to where it uh, burnt up the glass. Um, if you look, these are the two digits that are always on. They look pretty good. They're not burnt at all. And there's, a, there's six, uh, five displays in it. And none of them that I saw at first glance have burned up glass. So hopefully we'll be able to save all, all five of them. But when we repaired the solenoid board that provides the power for the displays, it had failed in such a way, which is common, that the 250 volts that it gets from the transformer, it wasn't turning down. It was just sending the 250 straight through the displays. So these are designed to work on like 180, 190, something like that. I think the, I think the manual says 190. Uh, I, I think we after we fixed it, we set it at 175. But the uh, it needs 170, 180, 190, something like that. Well, it's been getting 250. So these resistors uh, get charred, right? And the factory ones are quarter watt. So they do a weird thing. So these are half watt that we're going to replace it with. And they're 100K ohm resistors. So the banding is brown, black, yellow. That's 100K, and if you, if you measure them with the multimeter, that's about what they are right now. These are the ones that were in it. You can see they look pretty gnarly, but if you look real close, they are also brown, black, yellow, banded. Okay, so that one there's obvious, brown, black, yellow. If you check the resistance though, I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I need to get out my clips. I've got some that clip on it. We're just trying to prove the point here. It's down to 47 ohms. Now I was thinking, well maybe that's an orange or something, right? Let me see if I've got my little cheat sheet here. If I have my cheat sheet, maybe we'll cheat. I was thinking maybe I'm reading it wrong. And those are not 
100 K ohm resistors. But they are 100 K ohm resistors. <laughs> right? It's a brown line. Well, if it was a orange one, it would be three. Uh, and then the second one is black. Right? Okay, so it would be... And then the yellow is the third one. 10K. So it would be 30, 10K. 300K. So if that's orange, then these should be even higher. They should be 300K. So the rare thing that it's doing is resistors usually burn up and open up. So usually a resistor will rise in resistance. So this 100K resistor, which is the same as what these were from the factory, it's just a little beefier. It's a half watt instead of a quarter watt. This 100 ohm resistor, 99% of the time, if it starts to fail, it will open up. So instead of being 100K, it'll now be 140K or 150K. Or eventually it will get up so high um, that it, if you break it in half, it will have infinite resistance. Or close enough to it, I guess. The air probably would have resistance between it. If you break it in half, this side would no longer be connected to that side. Right now, this side is connected to that side with 100,000 ohms of resistance through the ceramic, through the, uh, the resistor, right? These, instead of getting higher and higher, they're getting lower. So it's shorting. Very weird. That does not usually happen. I guess it's because of the way the resistors are made. So usually when I work on these, if you can test the resistors in the board, and usually uh, when you test them, they'll be like 150,000 ohms, something like that, because they're they're wearing out, they're they're opening up. That's how resistors almost always fail. But these are rare ones that are failing by shorting. They're getting lower in resistance. Crazy. So uh, I'm going to replace all those, and whenever you replace them, you see how it's burning up the board. Well, we fixed the power problem on the solenoid driver, so that should fix that. But when you fix it. Stick the thing up off the board a little bit. Don't go, don't go way high where it'll hit other stuff. But stick it up where it's off of the board just a little bit so a little error can get between it and the board. And um, that'll help you. So if you have like one of these digits missing, usually the problem is this resistor. So resolder the connector first. That will solve most of your problems. Replace the six resistors if they're all screwed up. Sometimes you get one where they look real clean. Just leave them. It just means that the thing's never been overtaxed. Um, people will tell you, "Oh no, you got to replace them." You don't have to replace them if if they're, you know, if they've made it 50 years and they're fine, or 40 years and they're fine. Let's give it another 40 years. <laughs> but these obviously test bad, so we're going to replace them. And I hope I don't have to on all five displays, but if I do, I will. So that will fix most of your other problems. If you then put it back in and you've still got issues, then you've got a problem with one of your transistors or with the decoder chip. If you get a bunch of garbage where things uh, there's like an entire segment missing or something, a lot of times it's the decoder chip. Or if instead of saying 100,000, it says 892,143 points, well, there shouldn't be a three on the last digit, so something's bad wrong, right? And it's probably that decoder chip. So I'm going to put the resistors in, I'm going to clean off the glass, and then we're going to go pop it in the machine and uh, see if that helped us on that one, and then we'll move through the rest of them. So that's the one we just messed with. In the camera, it's flickering. It's not flickering uh, in real life that you can see with the naked eye. Okay, so uh, uh, that one's good. This one over here I haven't messed with yet, but look at this one. So this is the ball and play one, and it has an X over the first digit. Why would that be? Well, on the ball and play one, you only need two, three, five, and six. Those are the only ones that light up. So one and four never light. So they had one that had a bad digit, and they put it where the ball and play is because it's never used. So let's pull that one out and check it out and see if we can tell just by looking at it on the bench what the problem is. So it's the same story. You get cracked solder joints, right? But we've got a little different thing going on with the resistors. So the last digit is the one that doesn't work. So if you look at the resistors, they all look fine. But they're quarter watt 
resistors, they're undersized. So R1, R3, R5, if you test them, you get something like, I'm going to get so good at chopsticks, 103, 104K ohm. So they're actually within spec. So these are 100K ohm resistors and they're, you know, 1%, 5% or 10% resistors. They were, I think even, don't, didn't they make 20% ones? So if you're anywhere near 100K, it's probably the same value that it was at at the factory, right? But look at this one. R7, R9, and R11, okay? R1 drives this digit. R3 drives that digit. R5 drives that digit. R7 drives that digit. R9 drives that digit. And then R11 drives the digit that's missing. R11, well, I don't have to show you, is completely open. It looks perfect, but it's completely open. So that's the problem. So what made it burn up? They just couldn't handle the heat, I guess. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this driver. See how there are six of these? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, you guessed it. There's one for each thing, right? So this drives that one. Two, three, four, five, six. And it sends a signal up to these ones in this row. This almost looks like a drive-in movie theater, doesn't it? So the ones up here in the front row. <laughs> this one drives that digit, that one drives that digit, that one drives that digit, that one, that one, and that one. So the stuff that is involved with this that you should be concerned about is this driver, transistor, this transistor, and this resistor. Well, this resistors burn up. I wonder if the two transistors are fine. Okay, so I'll check those real quick. To check those, you put it on diode test, and then you measure between the center leg and the outside leg. Um, on each transistor and it doesn't really even matter which direction you do it You just want to see if they're all the same these six are identical and these six are identical So you've got two you've got six identical circuits, so you don't really need to know The perfect way to test that transistor you just need to see if that one's like that one and that one's like that one So what you test is the voltage drop on the diode check between the center leg and the outside legs and then you turn your leads around and do it the other way. And if they're all the same, the transistors are likely fine. So I'll check that real quick and uh, I'll swap that resistor and we'll see, uh, we'll see if that changes things. So there's the one we pulled out. It looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is completely open. Okay, now look at this. Check this out. So here's the one that I replaced. This is the one in question. Okay, so the resistor connects there, goes around this trace, connects to here, which is a transistor, which is connected to the glass here. Right, which must be how it gets its signal over to that screwed up, uh, wait a minute, that can't be right, can it? Have I got it right? Hmm, let me look real close. Oh yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. We followed it wrong. It's this one. That's the one I replaced. Which goes around here. To this one. Which is this transistor. Which connects to here. Which is the last transistor and goes up to the digit there that's screwed up. Okay, so why did that one fail and the other ones are all fine and don't even look overheated? And that one doesn't even look overheated. Oh, and the two transistors are fine. Okay, so what, what happened? What in the world? Well, if you follow it back this way, see this is the other transistor, right? These three legs are a transistor. Okay, and it's fed from this resistor, which is fed from this pin, which 
if you look close, the solder joint is cracked on. So I don't know. It could be that the solder joint cracked and it caused a bunch of resistance and it, you know, it stressed it and screwed it up. I don't know. Something like that's going on. Okay, so I'm going to reflow that and then we'll try it with just that one resistor swapped and see if that fixed our problem. That fixed it right up, people. We even scratched the X off. Nothing wrong with that display now. I'm not leaving an X on there. All right, uh, so I've got three left to work through. Uh, I don't think I'll have many problems. Let's put them in and then uh, we'll see how all the displays look lit up together. Okay, we've got them all up and running, but we're getting some problems on this one, the one that's in the fourth player position. So let's look at what's going on. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. We're missing a couple segments. Earlier we were just missing the bottom segment, but now the bottom left segment has also disappeared. So uh, got a little something going on there. So I'm gonna pull it back out and we'll check it again. All the other ones look like everything's cool on them. Um, this one that they had in the third player position is slightly burnt. See the little dot at the top of the second digit there? See it? little black spot that lights up too bright that's what they look like when they start burning but it's not it's not bad enough that it even really matters but this fourth one with a couple segments missing very confusing you got to have that working right unfortunately that may be the glass but we'll pull it out and look at it and see if we can determine what must be the problem okay if you look in the schematics those two segments are controlled by Q16 and Q17 and both of those transistors test just fine okay the resistors that are associated with them all test fine and they're connected to the legs of the glass so you get your signals in here does its thing on the board and then it has to connect to these signal to these lines on the glass okay you can see that those are all bent up and everything. It looks like maybe it's been swapped at some point. So the two that we are concerned with are 40, 39, 38, pin 36, which is this one, and pin 34, which is this one. They look to be connected just fine. Everything's cool. I checked it with the meter. Everything seems fine. None of the resistors are burnt up or anything. The only thing that worries me a little bit is if you look at the back of the glass, you see the corrosion inside the glass on those pins. I mean, it's just we're starting to lose these glasses, people. They don't make them anymore. But you see how that's discolored right there and right there, right there and right there, how it's just, it's like a corrosion inside the glass that's not good and there's no way to fix that because the, the glass is sealed and has a vacuum in it, so. Um, so it can could be the glass another thing I noticed was it's hard to see this but do you see that line on that digit there so it's like right there you see that yeah there you go see that what the hell is that don't like that. That's inside of it. So this glass is starting to fail. But we're going to do one last ditch effort. We're going to throw a Hail Mary. This chip here actually is what decodes the, the signals as they come in and then turns on all these transistors for the segments. So it could be that this chip's failing. So we're going to try swapping that just to make sure that's not it. Hopefully that is. It is a... MC1454-3B. Luckily, I've got tons of them. So uh, I'm going to swap that out, put a socket in it, and then we'll see if that gets, gets us our two segments back, hopefully. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, so with the new decoder chip, same exact problem, unfortunately. Um, so now I'm going to swap it with the third player one just to make sure it's not the harness. 
All right, folks. So unfortunately, it appears to be the glass on that particular display. So it's doing it no matter where you put it. So I think what we'll do is we'll get in touch with the customer and see if he wants us to get him a different one. I think you can still get them used for $50 or $55 um, that are working. So we'll see if we can track one down for him. But we'll leave, we'll ask him first because he, you know, he, he's not that concerned about all the cosmetics, and that's because he wants to keep it kind of original. And uh, that's the, uh, you can put that in the fourth player display. People hardly ever play a four player game, so it wouldn't really be an issue uh, under most uh, circumstances. So uh, we'll get in touch with him and see if he wants to uh, buy a new one. Well, not a new one, a, uh, a, uh, a, another used one, or if he wants to uh, just leave it how it is. You can get an LED replacement, but you have to replace all of them. Um... You know what? Do I have that right? I don't think you do, actually. Never mind. I'm wrong about that. You can get an LED replacement and just replace one of them. But the guy did mention to us that he wants to keep it as original as possible, which is why we're not doing too much uh, to repaint cosmetics and stuff. So we'll get in touch with him, see what he wants to do. He may just leave it how it is. Um, I think you can get a new old stock glass for it, too, but it's more than you can get a used entire display for so uh, we'll see what he's what he's interested in doing. Um, I think before we end this video, we'll mess with the soundboard a little bit. What do you think about that? Maybe we can see what's going on with the soundboard. Basically, it's not doing anything right now. Um, this is Bally's little tiny early soundboard. I, I believe this was the second soundboard that they did. Um, if you're not getting any sound, one of the things that you can do is kind of, this is going to sound crazy, touch the amp in this area and see if you get any, I see some stuff that looks like it's been modded, see if you get any kind of sound out of it, any, you're looking for amplification. Yep, so our amp is working. We're probably fine, actually. Whenever I turned at it, it kind of cracked loose. I'll bet it was a bad spot on the uh, on the potentiometer. I'll bet if we go into the sound test, it's going to work now. Is that the sound test? I don't know. That's what I know to do is to turn it off and back on, and it should play something at the beginning. Nothing. All right, so I'm going to pull the board out. We'll put it on the bench and check it out. Okay, folks, so this is what their little board looks like. Now... We heard the buzzing and everything because the amplifier is probably working just fine. You've got a little preamp chip here, LM380N, um, in a socket that someone has swapped at some point. Okay, let's see what other beautiful things we have to look at here. This is a UA741CP. I have no clue what that is, but maybe we can figure it out. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is what we always do. I'm going to swap out some of the capacitors just to see if that changes anything, and then um, we'll see if that if we uh, get into any. Uh, I see level repair. We also really need to swap this potentiometer here. This one is the sustain adjustment. So it's trying to play rock and roll all night. So it's going to go. Or something like that. Alright. If, if this is off. 
if this isn't working right, it will either play it and they never cut off. So it'll and it just messes it all up, or it's going to be a little staccato like. <laughs> right? So this, if it's messed up, it'll still work. It'll just sound weird. This, though, is your, your actual volume control, and if it's messed up, you won't get anything. And when I turned it earlier, it did kind of pop loose. So it's... They're known for going bad, too, you know. Um, so we're going to put a new one in. I need to look in the manual and see what size it's supposed to be. I guess it says on it. Uh, but I'm also going to swap these caps. You can also swap the big one, but I've never had that fix anything. I don't think it needs to be done because it's just a filter cap for one of the, the voltage things. Oh, you know what? I messed this all up. That is not the amp. That is a voltage regulator. <laughs> hmm. Right? That is a... What is that? I'm trying to read it for you. Heck if I know. Another thing I'll have to look in the manual for. That's a voltage regulator. That's not, a, that's not an audio amp. Okay. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Maybe our 5 volts is dead. Maybe I should have checked that before I took it out. Well, well, we'll swap the caps and then we'll go to it. Oh, I guess I could test that now, too. Uh, but this is actually the amp. LM380. They've also replaced R18, but they put it on the back of the board. So there's been a little bit of hackage here. A little bit of hackery. But it doesn't look that bad. I believe this is going to be a 12, uh, a 5 volt um, regulator, I believe. But we'll look in the manual. Okay, so I'm going to swap those caps, uh, and then we'll we'll check out some manual stuff. I'm going to check this with the multimeter, see if it seems fine. And I'm going to swap this uh, potentiometer, and uh, then we'll retest it. And this time, I'll, uh, I'll check the voltages. Okay, so we swapped one, two, three, four, five capacitors. Uh, I uh, removed and cleaned the legs on that chip and put it back to amp. Replace the potentiometer, resolder the connector, and clean the pins on the uh, on the um, header there. Um, I need to test this. Let me test this real quick and see if I can tell if that's working right. Yeah, it seems to test fine. So uh, we're going to put it back in the machine, uh, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we're going to uh, test our voltages just to make sure we've got them. You've got a solenoid voltage there, 43 volts. You've got a ground voltage, and then test point five, I believe, is 12 volts. And then it creates a 5 volts, which is... Okay, there's the 12 volts. It creates a 5 volts... Uh, somewhere. There it is. Well... Mm, I don't know what's going on, because I think the 5 volts it looks to me like it's coming all onto the board. But we'll check it out. We'll figure it out. I've got a uh, cheat sheet, by the way. We're going to we're gonna get to a cheat sheet. We're going to call in reinforcements. The expert on this is going to help us out if that doesn't fix it. Stay tuned. All right, we're mounted back in. We should get a startup tune. I think some capacitors saved the day again, people. Wow. All right, so we're going to try to uh, start a game. Let's see if we can hear it.
Okay, so you might say, why did it do all that? It's because I hit the middle coin switch. They must have it set where you get like 20 credits or something. Unfortunately, they've got the dip switch on that tells you how many we've got. But So uh, I've got a bunch of credits now, so I can try to start the game. <laughs> I never get tired of it. Okay, i got to turn up the sustain. It's a little bit too much, you hear it? I don't know, that's still a little too much I think. Let's go way down the other way. We went down so far that uh... Or maybe I'd already started too many players. I guess I've already started them up. Hmm. I don't know. Or maybe I need more credits. Adding tons of credits. Okay. Yeah, it won't start another game, so, hmm. Alright, we'll go into the test mode. until our backup gets here. We got a KISS expert coming in to help us. He can tell us exactly how it's supposed to sound. That's okay, going to reboot. I think that's probably about right. Yeah, that's it, right? That's pretty good. Okay, um, so we didn't have to get too technical on it, but basically there is a prom up in the top left corner, old school vintage stuff, uh, and then um, it receives solenoid signals, so the MPU can control solenoids, so it, and it can send solenoid signals to the board uh, to select different sound inputs, and depending on which ones are selected, it plays different stuff. So very cool, very cool. All right, so... Uh, I guess we're up and playing. Let's see if the flippers are going to work without the thing resetting. Yeah. I think we're back alive, people. Obviously, have a lot of stuff that needs work. So you can't tell the targets are all down. Got lots of lights out. The kickers all seem to be working. So it's coming back to life, slowly but surely. So we'll figure out about the display. Very cool to get the sound back. We need to do a lot of lights because uh, this game had a heck of a light show. So um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we can do on that next time. But I hear the buzzing. It's the coin door coil. Coin door lockout coil needs cleaned a little bit. All right, folks. So there you go. Make sure to leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. Uh, <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed it so far. I think we're getting somewhere. I've got the old 
rusted pinball in here, but I don't want it to. I don't want it to go over to playfield. That's one of the reasons the playfield's all beat up, you know. So we don't want that to happen anymore. Looks like everything's cool. Players have we got? That's oh, just one, I believe. Ball four. Ball five. All right, that should end the game. So there we go. Okay, folks, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. We'll get back on the lights next time. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below there is a link to Amazon. If you click that link, uh, it gives us a commission because we sent you to Amazon. So if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, just click our link first, please. We appreciate that. A lot of people have been doing that. Thank you. Uh, and check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. And uh, you can see pictures and prices and everything of all of the games that we have available for sale right now. This game is not ours. We're just repairing it for a gentleman. Um, but check that out. We also have a parts page on there where we have links to some of the equipment that we use in our games. Uh, the tools and things like that. Supplies. Uh, and we also have things on there like our t-shirts. We just got a new t-shirt design with a new logo and all that. It's pretty cool. Go check it out. It's on our parts page on our website, lionsarcade.com. So we appreciate everybody that's done that. And then finally, last but not least, if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you may wa like watching us work on old buildings. My brother, Donnie, and I have bought a couple buildings in a small town near here in the downtown section, and we are trying to fix up the buildings to help revitalize downtown. So go check that out. It's the My Brother Donnie channel. The link is down below, My Brother Donnie. So go check that out. He's literally My Brother Donnie. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, next time we will be working on lights. Um, and you may say, oh, that's kind of boring. Well, not really, because in this one, it has this board, the auxiliary light board. And what does that do? Well, it does one of the coolest things ever in pinball. It makes the KISS logo animate and light up at the top of the play field. As you can see, it's completely dead. But in the next video, we're going to fix that up. So <laughs> give us a thumbs up for filming it. Leave your comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. And we'll see you on the next video.